Hey everybody, I'm Jeff Lenoski and I'm going to show you why you may never have to bunny hop your mountain bike again. So hopefully by now you've had a chance to check out one of my Trail Boss videos. My love of riding technical terrain has spanned over 25 years. I started out competing at Observed Trials. You need to take your mountain bike and ride over the roughest, toughest terrain you could possibly find. I've done my fair share of bunny hops. As a matter of fact, years ago I set the world record for bunny hopping a full-size mountain bike at 45 and a half inches. Now I'm going to show you a more practical, useful way to get over stuff on your mountain bike. It's called a punch. Here are the three reasons you're going to want to learn to use a punch instead of a bunny hop. Reason number one, seat height. You might have a rigid seat post or even if you have a dropper, when you try to do a bunny hop, you never feel like the seat is quite low enough. When you do a punch, doesn't matter if your seat is up or down, you're going to be able to get over some pretty high stuff. Reason number two, speed. When you do a bunny hop, you need a decent amount of speed. When you do a punch, you can do it uphill or downhill, fast or slow. And reason number three, dual suspension. Suspension is designed to keep your tires on the ground and tracking straight. So when you're trying to bunny hop, it's gonna be pretty tough to get a dual suspension bike pretty high. By using a punch, you can get your bike just as high whether you're on a suspension bike or a fully rigid bike. This is an intermediate move, so you're gonna to wanna to have some fundamental skills down before you try to master this next step. Let's go over those real quick. So the first move you're gonna to wanna to make sure you have down is your front wheel and your rear wheel lift. Next, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you have bunny hops down. They don't have to be super high, but just having a basic understanding of the move is gonna help you. So once you've linked the front wheel lift and the back wheel lift, it's time to try that onto something. All right, so let's break this down into three steps. First is a compression. When your front tire touches, the bars are in your chest and you're crouched down. Then you have the explosion. That's your upward thrust. You're jumping off the pedals. Your bars are in your lap. And then the thrust. That's when you get the bars away from you and you do the scoop just like on flat ground to get your back tire up onto the obstacle. All right, so one more time from a different angle. So as my front tire touches, I'm doing the compression. I'm coiled up like a spring, the handlebars are in my chest, and I'm ready to explode with some vertical lift. I jump off my feet. This is giving me the lift. The handlebars are in my thighs, and it allows me to do the thrust. As I push the handlebars away from me, I'm scooping the back tire up off the ground just like I would on flat ground. This takes a ton of upper body strength it's almost like a reverse row to get your back tire up. So the number one mistake I see when people do a punch is maintaining speed. You wanna be aware of your speed and if you're on flat ground or downhill, it's gonna be pretty easy to do that. Where it becomes a problem is when you do this on an uphill. So I always like to try to throw a pedal stroke in before I do this move, unless I'm going pretty fast and that allows me to be ramping up instead of slowing down when I go over an obstacle. This is especially important when you're doing these moves on a climb. Every part of this move is the same, except as you approach the obstacle, you're gonna wanna start a full pedal stroke about a bike and a half length away. Being familiar with your gears and how far each gear moves your bike is gonna help you do this move. It's just a matter of practice and spending some time getting used to which gears pedal your bike how far. All right, so now it's time to go a little bit higher and show you why this move is called a punch. You're basically punching your front tire into the face of the obstacle. So what that means is I'm using the bottom quarter of the wheel and carrying my momentum forward and doing that same technique. It takes a lot more spring as you hit and it takes a lot more shoulder roll and push with the handlebars to drive the front tire away from you and get your bike up onto the obstacle. I pretty much always use a pedal stroke into it so that I'm ramping up my speed. And then you really want to spring forward and push the handlebars away to allow you to get the bike up, up onto the obstacle. Now this is a pretty big example of a, something that you're going to punch, but it's easier to illustrate some of the things that you need to think about as you start going on higher things. Now if I look at the top of this rock, getting up on it is a tall order, literally and figuratively. But by doing a punch, you're going into the face of it and you're using the bottom quarter of your front wheel, so you're essentially shrinking that move as much as possible. 
I pretty much always use a pedal stroke into it. I'm using that bottom quarter of my wheel to hit the front face. One last recap. As your front tire hits, compress, then spring upwards, get that vertical lift, and then thrust your bars away, let the seat come between your legs, and roll up onto the obstacle. So that's how you do a punch. Now it's up to you. First step, subscribe to my YouTube channel and make sure you like this video. And then the second step, get out and practice as much as possible. Like I showed you in the video, you can do this on small obstacles, big obstacles, man-made or natural. So get out, practice as many things as you can, different speeds, different heights, and next time you're out with your friends, you could be a trail boss.